I'd like to congratulate uh, all uh, the young people and their teachers in the, delivering the very good results that we're seeing in the performance tables published today. And they all deserve congratulations because to achieve those results, you need to have worked very hard and, uh, and we're all very proud of what's been achieved. Uh, in today's performance table, we've also included for the first time, not just the five or more GCSEs, including English and Maths, but also a new English baccalaureate, which is a broader measure of a broad academic uh, uh, range of achievements at GCSE in English, maths, the double science, or two out of the three individual science GCSEs, um, a modern foreign language, uh, or um, one of the humanities, history or geography. And w we're joining most other developed countries in having an assessment uh, figure that measures a broad range of academic achievement, and we think this is very important. We've included science because we believe that we need to have young people studying science to 16, uh, and also uh, modern language because we are concerned that since 2000 there's been a drop in the proportion of young people taking a GCSE in a modern language from about 79% down to 43% this year, and that's very worrying, not just for the educational achievement of a young person, and it is an important part of developing uh, the intellect of a, of a young person, but also for the country as a whole. We do need to have a cohort of school leavers and uh, university graduates who are competent in a modern language. And indeed, one of the oh, ancient languages, uh, Latin or Greek as well, is very important. And that will also count uh, towards the language components of the English bag. We believe very strongly that the public sector needs to be transparent. So we're not just publishing a huge range of data about the academic achievements and exam achievements uh, in today's table so that uh, a parent or a school can uh, interrogate the system to you know, look in more detail at the uh, exam results that uh, the schools have achieved, but also the spending figures, how schools are spending taxpayers' money. And schools can compare themselves to see, well, how is that school spending their money compared to how we're spending ours? How much are they spending on um, heating or administration or supply teachers compared to ours? And then comparing what they're spending with what they're achieving. And this isn't about pointing fingers, it's about spreading best practice so that a school can say, well, how are they achieving that up the road? I'll go and see that head and see if we can collaborate and work together to deliver the same approach in our school that they're managing to achieve in, in, in that other school. So transparency is really the name of the game and spreading best practice is what it's hoping to achieve. We've also made some other changes to the uh, performance table so that parents and professionals can uh, interrogate the system so that they can, for example, uh, look to see which schools in their area are performing best in the English back, or they can interrogate to see which schools in their area achieve best in the basics, English and maths, or five or more GCSEs including English and maths, or they can look at the spending figures and put, and, and put those in the, in the order of efficiency in their particular area. So it gives a, a, a great deal more scope to parents and to teachers to find out what's going on in, in, in the system. And, and it's all about transparency and spreading best practice. And we think this is a tool that I think a lot of people will find very useful.